where we've gone. All right, so Jabin is going to give us a lovely lightning talk on data and DevOps. And then Jess, a big round of applause for Jabin, please. Hi, everybody. I'm Jabin Naikwadi. This is my first talk outside the organization, so please bear with me. So uh, something about myself, so I've been working with NHS Digital, so it was previously called a uh, different name, so we have finally moved to something called the digital part of NHS. So we collect the data from uh, various healthcare suppliers and then we process it. So I'll take you through a journey from my manual testing into DevOps world and what learnings I had, what challenges I had and uh, you know things like that. So, yeah. So the agenda for today is there was a national project I worked on, which is the tariff system, which calculates uh, pricing for the healthcare data, which then commissioners use to uh, allocate money because we don't pay our healthcare, isn't it? So we get it free of cost, if you can say, but then that comes, that's calculated, and then it is uh, it comes from the commissioners to the healthcare provider. So how what money they need to allocate is something that this tariff system uh, calculates. So then we'll talk about the test data because everything in NHS is about data, data, data. So that's I'll, I'll just tell you what uh, challenges and how complex the data setup is. Uh, yeah, the challenges. And then um, previously the testing that I was involved in, manual testing, it was called systems integration testing. So we had various suppliers supplying us the code and then we were doing the integration testing. It was manual as well as we had automation test. But then we moved into DevOps. So. Uh, so that transition phase. Okay, so uh, the national project. So the project itself is called Secondary Uses Services SAS Plus. So it is a single uh, system which uh, receives all the healthcare data from the hospitals. So you have various healthcare data like pharmacies, GPs, and things like that. So this particular project is dealing only with the hospital data, like something that you go in emergen uh, accident and emergency department or you go to the hospital or you go to an outpatient appointment. So this is that data. So we collect the data and we we, um, we, we do tariff calculation. We identify how many cancer treatments we have done, how many knee replacements we have done, things like that. So that is the national project. And the bit that we were sort of transitioning was uh, the entire project was in, in Oracle and um, the olden uh, technology, Java, and things like that. So then we moved on to uh, DevOps model. So if you look by the figure, so the tariff calculation itself, we re receive around 160 million files per month. So you can imagine how much data that is. And, uh, and the calculation is around 2 billion pounds per month. And this is from two years ago, the data that I've taken. So uh, that's how huge amount of data and you know, uh, calculations we do, or the system does. So this is how the uh, system looks like. So you, you collect data from various sources and then you process it and you utilize it. It looks so simple, isn't it? But then there are uh, loads of complications that come with it. So uh, there are other systems which are not there on this screen, but then we get the patient uh, information from patient demographics that you go to GP, you register yourself. So that data is stored in a system called patient demographic system. So then we use that data to identify, okay, if the person I'm treating, do I know him? And things like that. So, and we collect data in form of XML files. Um, and then the calculation itself is done by a COTS product called Woodworth's Grouper. So it will take all the clinical data, like uh, the data that we get in, it will just tell you that uh, we have done so much this diagnosis, uh, this treatment. So based on those clinical codes, we identify or this COTS product identifies what sort of treatment was it? Was it, uh, let, let's say, a cancer treatment? Or, uh, so that is called the health resource group, HRG. So we uh, use that HRG that the COTS product gives us, and then we uh, calculate the tariff for that particular thing. And it is not as simple as that. It is about different genders have got different payments, and then adults and uh, you know um, children and adults. And then you have various uh, complications as well that if you have voluntarily come to the hospital or you are an emergency appointment. So all the, the tariff complications comes in there. And then all the calculations are done and the extracts are generated in form of CSV, JSON, and you know various different formats. And then they are given to commissioners and providers. Providers are people who send us the, us the data, they are the hospitals. And the commissioners are people who calculate, uh, who allocate funds to these hospitals. So the extracts are sent to them uh, via there was another portal which was which has now been replaced, but then that was another uh, supplier who, who hosted the portal. 
So uh, I think they're called EMIS Health now, I believe. So to show you the data, so this is a very small snippet of an 2,000 uh, lines of files, which which tells you, I, I don't want to give you all the details, but then there is loads of complications that when did a patient get admitted, when did he get discharged, what was his method of admission, what was his method of discharge, and you know who was a provider of this, uh, and you know some clinical codes and things like that. So it is a sort of a very complex thing. So uh, it's not about the complexity, and there are other things to that, which is like, you know, uh, the testing that we do, we, we should not be using any patient identifiable uh, data or live data, if I can say. I cannot use somebody's NHS number, uh, date of birth and postcode and his gender. So these are four key fields which are sort of patient sensitive. So when we are doing a testing, we need to make sure we are not using any of the live patient identifiable uh, data. And then there's something called sensitive clinical data. Like for example, there are certain codes that the provider centers and we are supposed to wipe off all the patient information from that data. Like for example, somebody is having an abortion or a gender change. So these uh, clinical codes that come in the files, they are very sensitive. So we need to strip out the data before we process that in the tariff engine. So then there are certain restricted NHS numbers, maybe for the royal family and things like that, which we, uh, if we get those NHS numbers in the file, we need to strip off the patient information and we, we tag that file as highly sensitive. And then also they are like, maybe some of us, we don't want our data to go out of NHS or we don't, NHS doesn't, uh, should not be even receiving our data, for example. So there are something called patient opt-outs. So we need to cater for uh, those level of complexities as well. Okay, so now on the challenges. So previously the system was like, uh, we had been learning from our failures and we learned, we learned, we learned, we, we knew that what we know now is a perfect system, which was the manual system. And suddenly we were told that we are moving to DevOps model and then it is uh, all shiny things. You know, we, we have Spark, Python, Splunk and Grafana dashboards and all <laughs> shiny things. And we were like, oh, we, we already know what the data is and, you know, we know everything, but then what is this new product and how are we going to, uh, you know, use that in our uh, project so it was a very uh, because it is a very complex integrated system we had various stakeholders we have nhs england they are all sister companies of nhs digital nhs england nhs improvements they define what sort of tariffing we need to uh, which treatment is going to get what sort of tariff and then we have this woodworth grouper for example who are creating us the hrgs and then we had some other uh, systems and supplies, so it was quite complex. And we were like, how can we get everybody together in a you know, DevOps room and we, we develop such a system? The team was sort of very distributed. Oh, sorry, let me. So the system was very complex. So the technology we, was totally new to us and we had a new team all together. So there were very few people picked from the old project which we was going to work on the new project, possibly because all the DevOps, they knew all the technology and the people that were picked, they only knew about the domain knowledge or they knew the test data. And apart from that, I myself personally, I didn't know anything of the new technology. I was sort of very, uh, not very comfortable moving into the new project because I was like, maybe I may not be able to, you know, gel with the new team because I don't know anything of it. I just know the domain knowledge and I know what the test data is. But apart from that, there was nothing I knew about. So uh, even the test setup needs to be done from scratch because we don't have any data in the new system. So we need to get the data into the new system. And then it was not easy because the way we processed our data, we processed through uh, you know, an external data um, transfer service and that came into the environment. And then we did the calculations. We were like, okay, so this is going to be total replacement. And how are we going to get the data? Because the bit that was built was only the engine and we didn't have the uh, transfer tool as yet built in. So we had some challenges there. And then we had a very complex release system. So uh, the way we release data into production is very, very complicated. So we just can't release anything into production because uh, if we go wrong, we cannot go wrong. We have to always be right for NHS Digital. Otherwise, it is like the media if, uh, is, it comes in. So there were one particular instance. I, I was not present a part of that project, but just to share with you guys that some system was developed and it was so late. It was calculating certain payments for a cohort of patients and it didn't work and they got all wrong and the people who were not getting paid because of the new calculations they had a uh, uh, sort of uh, they, they came to nhs digital and they they had a lot, lots of bad words around there so it was a uh, yeah it was a bad experience for nhs digital but then there are things like that which 
we should never go wrong so we should always be doing right thing so we have a release process in place where we have the various stakeholders and every stakeholder has to approve the release before it actually goes into production so um, and then when we are doing devops it is continuous integration of uh, the code into the right release and the way we released previously was two major release in a year and here it was we are talking about one weekly release so you can imagine the pressure we guys had because there was a service team which actually signs off on finally and the service team's main stakeholders are us if we say yes we are happy with the code then they are sort of comfortable releasing it to life so we had a great responsibility on our shoulder so it was like uh, for this complex release process so initially when this project went live there was certain testing which we had not done and for me i i thought this is very critical to the project so there was a release process we have a place where we we have to approve the uh, change so i said okay i'm not uh, approving this change. i'll reject it because i know this key testing has not been done and i didn't know what the implications of that rejection would be in. so the implication of that reje rejection meant that we were not going live the entire release process was stalled and things were moved back into planning and for from planning to evaluation phase it, it takes a lot of time and it take, uh, takes a lot of you know people in the senior management to take make that call so it was a uh, you know bad experience but then obviously that was where I, I i don't say i failed but then i did the right thing and then your challenge and then the service to ownership saying that yeah we take the risk in place so as we we don't only do testing we do assurance where we say that okay this functionally it's working but when you try to fit into the full solution what about the end user experience will they have a better experience like if you're changing we are releasing something in live we need to make sure the uh, communication has been sent out to the end users and we also make sure the communication is sorry quite, quite soft enough in terms of the words that has been used and things like that so it's not only about testing we also do a lot of assurance which is the end user experience and how they feel about it okay so the journey from uh, manual testing or the v model testing into uh, a complete devops solution was like so previously we were uh, so now we are testing throughout so as soon as a jira ticket is raised by the uh, bas we we try to understand what sort of testing uh, we need to do we raise risk early on we saying that okay if this change is going on uh, live these are the things we expect to be tested and these are the risk with it so we need to make sure we we identify all that and then previously what we used to do is the suppliers did their piece of testing then it went into system integration testing and then we did the uat as well so we did two phases of testing so we sort of had a competition like who is going to find the maximum bug so even though we found we spotted something we, we were like we want the you know bug rate more in our end so it was sort of a healthy competition if you can say but then that's how it was but then what that meant is we are testing at the end and we're raising issues at the end which meant that we have to again go through the entire cycle so that was wrong so uh, so we have improved we, we do testing throughout right from the ticket being raised till the end uh preventing bugs so like i said like now because we do uh, we get involved very early on with the devops we sit down like we have the three amigos uh, approach so we sort of prevent bugs rather than them being raised we're finding later on so um, and then uh, testing the understanding over checking the functionality like like i said we so when we are we have a jira ticket raise the functionality is being written there we we understand what sort of uh, the what sort of testing we need to do what risks are there and you know where things could break rather than we go at the end and we get the product and we just checking if the functionality is working so and then we are building the best system by doing this over breaking the system so when we get the system later on in the day we we try to break it as much as possible but then when we have thought of all these scenarios when we have uh, initial in our initial planning then we, we we don't be in this situation where we are trying to break something because we have already tried those scenarios early on in the project uh, the other thing that was that is really good is it is a team responsibility so when i rejected the uh, rfc or the release the change so i i was sort of so nervous and worried that everybody is going to point fingers at me so on the slack channel they said oh this rfc has been rejected by so and so and i, and I was so nervous i was thought like Okay, people are going to come and I'm going to be taken in the corner and given sort of a lot of good words, but then it was like a uh, the people around they said, "Oh, we do understand the risk, and you know, we missed an opportunity because we had already raised it early on, and we we didn't take uh, heed of it." So, so they were quite uh, good about it. But in olden days, if anything used to go wrong, because we had just had two releases, we had three months or six months of testing window. Anything goes wrong, it was like finger pointing. Okay, so why? What has Test and Assurance done? How has it slipped off? So we were answerable. We had lessons learned, and we had to go there and 
face those difficult situations, but not anymore because it's a team's responsibility and not over the tes testers' responsibility. Uh, so the learnings from uh, this overall uh, transition from uh, manual into DevOps was communication with the team and uh, team members and stakeholders. So it is like, you know, we need to communicate a lot. Previously, we just got some documents and we said, okay, based on these requirements, we will uh, create our test cases and you know, we'll write our scripts and things like that. But then we, we don't rely on any documentation now. What we, we can do is we can directly go and approach anybody in the uh, project team, any BA, any DevOps, and you know, we, we can communicate with them rather than just sitting in isolation. Maybe there's a functionality you have never tested or you don't have any knowledge of. Maybe there's a technical change that is going in, like increasing the cluster size of some uh, AWS cluster and then we don't know what, what configuration changes it is. So you can just go and speak to the DevOps. Because in the olden days, it was because it was a distributed system sitting in various different parts of UK and some overseas. So we, we did have that opportunity to go and speak to them. But then when you have an opportunity, when you're sitting in an embedded system, that makes the communication is a key. So you need to get up from your desk and go and speak to them. So that is something I learned because I was very shy. And even now, you must have seen I'm not mingled with many people because that's how I am. But then I realized that I need to communicate with people so that I learn a lot of things. And the other thing I learned is being proactive and open to change. So when we started off with the DevOps, I was like, oh, we have learned so many lessons. We know we are doing it uh, perfectly. But then uh, DevOps came and then it just uh, poured water on all our learnings. And it said, no, this is all wrong and you need to do it this way. And then we were like, no, that is wrong. And But then I was sort of convinced. And then I started thinking from their point of view, why do they think this is right? Rather than telling, oh, I am right and I'm not going to change. So I just started thinking, why do... I need to change, and if I have to change, do, is it the right things? Do my ethics or learning the quality that I have, the processes that I have, will they, you know, work with the new change? So when I started thinking, I was sort of being uh, also proactive in trying to understand what it is and how it is going to impact me. That helped me a lot. So it's like we need to all need to be open to change. If we see some change, we should not be very rigid about what our previous experiences. We need to be open to change. However good we are with our work, maybe we, we don't know some things that. The new world is getting to us, so it's very good to be, uh, you know, open to change. And then, so owning the responsibility. So what happens is uh, when there were some tickets raised in the previous world, we had some requirements. We were like, oh, the requirement says this, we are just going to test this. But then now, so we sort of own the requirement to test it perfectly, so we also can challenge. Maybe the requirement itself is wrong. So previously, we, we used to like say, oh, it's a responsibility of BAs and things like that. So there are so many things. So we interact with many different teams, like the service team, the DevOps team, um, the BAs, and various other uh, people, the analysts. So we need to talk to them and try to understand what it is, rather than just saying, oh, it's not my job. We can Because we need to interface with them. We need to be you know, uh, owning the responsibility as if it is your baby, and you need to just try to make sure you're getting it done. Uh, the other thing is, because we used to previously test three months or six months in a row, we had loads of testing, so we had loads of test cases written, and we said, oh, we, we, we do a tick mark, we have covered so and so functionality because we have tested it perfectly. But then that's not the way, because in the way DevOps work is you automate as you go along through continuous integration. So you need to understand with this change what risk I'm getting in. So you need to do risk-based testing rather than just testing everything blindly. So you have to be very, you know, um, proactive about the risks what you are testing so because like uh, I don't remember there was a three weeks testing that she decided uh, she thought it needed but then in three days so if you have to cover three weeks testing in three days you should be able to identify what those tests are what are those three days worth of testing which will give me enough quality so that my product will at least not fail you know you don't have severity one or severity two issues so you need to identify what those risks are uh, the second, the other thing I learned was attention to detail. So previously we were not sort of very careful about things like you know the sensitive data, for example. So we were like, okay, this is the test data, and we will run it. And uh, the DevOps, like when they came in, they said, oh, this test data is like it's okay, we can automate it. We'll take an existing file, and we know there's a data dictionary which says that okay, this particular tag of XML can hold so and so values. So they said, oh, we automated it, and they automated the product. But what they didn't know is the integrity of the test data. So for example, the test data said, oh, uh, a dead man has given birth to a, uh, twins. So you know, it, it, it's that data. The integrity has to be perfect that 
the data that you flow in has to be you know matching each and every criteria you just can't cherry pick something and you can't just put in so that was a big learning where we decided that test data cannot be generated auto generated by devops so what we now do is we take the live data it is anonymized by a certain team for various uh, because they have to publicize to different uh, colleges and hospitals they want nhs data for their own studies so they anonymize the data which means they they um, encrypt the patient uh, identifiable fields they keep the core clinical data intact the birth dates and some of the clinical dates are also changed for the security reasons like the G general pgp codes as well so then uh, that anonymized data is then taken by the test data team and then the devops have now built a tool where they will say they will replace the hashed values with some you know test data field so we we automated that so it was not completely devops you could have done in that so we need to have an attention to detail to see that okay if you are doing it we need to do it in in a very perfect manner so that we are getting the things right the first time then the other thing is like the embedded working pattern which we all know it it gives a lot of benefits because we are sitting close by with the people uh, who are developing it so it's like it it does help a lot and also it is like previously we didn't have any events and uh, so many things but now we have stand ups we have retrospectives we have team events team lunches so because you are embedded in the team you know that person you can go out freely you can speak and then you can you know also discuss ideas about testing and various other things so uh, working in an embedded pattern really helped me a lot and the other thing that really helped me was attending uh, testing events like this so i attended first of my event i attended i don't remember was a bcs event in infinity works so there were loads of testers good testers like you and they presented loads of good things and then that sort of got me to thinking yeah there are various new ideas i can use and not the ones that i have been using for so long it's not always what i know is right so i have to increase my horizon so attending this events definitely helped me a lot okay so that's it from me any questions yeah um, I'm just wondering whether uh, you've added security into any of that, or is security still like a very separate thing? Okay, so all the testers who deal with any live-like data, because there are some scenarios where we cannot test on, uh, you know, the test environment because the way the data is. So the people who are doing testing on live environment, or any developers, or anybody who's going to touch the live data, there's some process called security clearance you have to go through. So it's like. Uh, apart from that the testers are security cleared and then there is something a department called ig information governance so for every change they are one of the stakeholders to approve a change so most of the time they just uh, approve it because they know that this is not going to impact any of the uh, you know things so we we do have clinical safety as well for example if it is the data if it is the live data the doctors are going to use they are doing an operation and they want to use some data uh, from the system so those systems are clinically safety tested so they have to be right because while doing an operation doctor can not get a wrong information of the patient and then do something incorrectly so we have various uh, levels of security and it is the data highly secured for me to get into uh, you know the test environments i have to go through three four tokens and two factor authentications and things like that so it's what about yeah. security testing of live applications the security yeah that's another department of security testing which is done by um, some other team so we we do have a security team like i said they are various teams we do uh, a lot of different different types of security so we do have a uh, security test team and then we have external pen testers that come to organize it. before any live release we make sure we it is pen tested and do they try and like <coughs> add into this devops approach to testing yes they do is that still like separate and because in the other things you have like have the way you do it <laughs> I'm just kind of curious whether they've really tried to embed into the approach. Yeah, they they are one of uh, the embedded. Th though they are not in each and every ticket, as I said, they, but then they are there on the key uh, tickets. And for any release to go live, as I said, we have to. Have, they are various stakeholders. I'm not mentioning everything, but then they are one of them that the security team is there. So they manage all the Splunk. You know, we do a lot of logging. And previously, we had auditing. We an audit table in the database. Now we have Splunk in the cloud and things like that. So they are very very uh, you know security focused and making sure things are. I think is getting leaked out because if the data leaks out, it is a big, you know, concern for NHS. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm um, really only within to So uh, my question is really like, how did the rest of the team change? You know, because I'm sure it was not just you. There was a whole lot of animal testers in the team. How did they feel about it? And did they feel insecure? Or how did they change or not change? Or yeah. Uh, <laughs> They, because it was only me who was pulled into this particular project initially and there were other people who were moved but then they were 
other stuff the existing system was supposed to be maintained so there were very few people left in the organization if i can say uh, when we uh, transition into this devops model but then saying that they are testers who really struggled which is why uh, because you know i transition sort of quite you know uh, devops ways so uh, one of the organizers a friend he suggested that i come and give this talk because it was like you know there are still people in my organization who are struggling they don't understand the concept of uh, devops embedded system they they are still in their old ways so it is it's a challenge for me to get uh, you know to them to change their mind so i'm sort of organizing testing guilds in nhs digital so that you know people move so there are people who have moved in but then as i said that there are still some people who are in the old model yeah any more thank you guys